And I'll give him a little bit of intro and then ask him to uh, open up his mic and, and, um, and talk to us because I mean, he's delivered multi-million dollar global projects for 15 years now. So he's done all that. He's worked with the likes of 360-bet, global gaming, in Google, Triple Eight. Um, and now he's, he's doing some slightly different things. He's the founder of um, Afia Record, which means health record. And this is a health tech platform. And he's also the non-exec director of the Machine Learning Institute of Africa. Um, very, very much involved and associated with Africa amongst other countries. He was the chief strategist, the team that introduced the Global Good Project to the Nigerian government. That was via the office of the vice president and the minister for agriculture and health. He's also involved in advisory roles in projects in Kenya, Ghana, Uganda, and Nigeria. So I'm sure you're getting a flavor as to why I really wanted John to come and speak to us. Uh, as I said, he's sitting in Nairobi at the moment. You can find him in the UK and in Ireland as well across the year once we're all traveling again. And I want, I want John to get real with us. Uh, John and I have touched base. We've been on podcasts together. And I know that he's quite outspoken in a really positive way about the implications of the opportunities in Africa for data and for AI and how it's just not as simple as going in there and trying to run programs. So John's going to lay that bare for us and give us his opinions and thoughts on that and share some of his work. So John, the stage is yours. It's quarter past five. Uh, it's yours for 20 minutes. We look forward to hearing from you. John, welcome. Uh, thanks very much, Richard. Um, pleasure to meet you all. And my name is John Kamara, as Richard has said. I am the founder for Afia Record here in Nairobi. I am also a director for the Nelson Mandela University, which is a PhD university in Arusha, and also the um, Machine Learning Intelligence Institute of Africa as well. Um, I think I'm gonna just um, quickly touch around, dive uh, right in and touch around AI and the, the challenges, the opportunities, and why we believe AI is um, a huge, part of the growth of um, 4IR in Africa at the minute. Um, seated here in Nairobi, we uh, started a health tech company. Uh, and the reason behind starting a health tech company was be able, for us to be able to create a situation where we can actually create a seamless flow of data for health so that patients who are at the core and the center of healthcare can actually access their health data and use it to find health services and access healthcare anywhere, anytime. And the reason why is because the, the three key problems we have in healthcare in Africa, one is infrastructure, which are hospitals. We don't have enough and we never will. It's just not possible. Um, resources, most of our resources are really smart doctors and nurses. They all travel to Europe or America because they get better jobs and get paid more money. So it's very difficult for us to keep these resources here. So the only other way, the third part of the problem is data and data which also then involves decisionary intelligence machine learning. If we're able to use, to harness data properly, we might be able to solve the other two problems a little bit because then we can use data to solve the problem of less doctors because doctors will have more time. And we can also use that to solve the problem of infrastructures because we can do a lot of telehealth care services without people necessarily going to the hospital. So, but the idea was to basically build a solution that gives the patients access to their data and puts them at the center of that and then creating a, a machine learning solution that allows us to manage healthcare. So what do we say in, in practicality is data in Africa exists and it doesn't exist. It exists because it's everywhere on the mobile phones that we use. We, we can access data, people build uh, platforms and in less than months, we just built our platform in, in less than a few weeks of beta testing, we have over a couple thousand people who are already hitting the platform without any marketing and without a lot of work done. So we haven't even hit town yet. Um, we have over 45 hospitals that we're onboarding in less than three weeks of being live. But the problem with all this is this data exists, but first of all, is not captured in the right manner for even to become machine learning readable. Um, you know, it's not captured in the right format for it to actually become usable. Now, the reason why machine learning becomes extremely in, in, in important in healthcare is because we're able to use this to model diseases. 
And the key part of disease modeling is allowing us to understand the prevalences of specific type of diseases based on location, um, the type of genetic um, components of the individual, and also the different cultural uh, nuances and the lifestyles of people, and how that affects you know, the different types of diseases that are very paramount in numerous parts of Africa. And nobody, a lot of people, you know, look at this and say, you know, it's impossible for us to do this because there is no access to data. But the opportunity that machine learning presents us is if we can collect this data in the right format, we'll actually be able to help the health infrastructure. We'll also be able to help a lot of patients with chronic illnesses to actually begin to solve some of these problems and create you know, some more precision medicine and some better um, um, solutions around how our doctors actually provide healthcare and provide a learning ecosystem using machine learning based on understanding our data. And I'll give you some examples. We were uh, recently in one of the counties here in Kenya and the, the, we were being asked a question, what is the prevalence of infection in pregnant women who are under 30 years old? And how do you use machine learning to help us understand a little bit better about this, what we can do, time, at what moment should we intervene? A number of very, very dynamic granular questions and nobody could answer that because we had no data. And this is where very basic machine learning, we're not even talking about deep learning or quantum machine learning or as deep as you got. Very basic modeling around machine learning based on the use cases of clear and accurate data can help us actually increase the opportunity to save the lives of people in rural communities by up to eight and a half percent on a very minimal scale without applying too much. So then you go into financial services where, you know, the, the, the digitization of the financial ecosystem has made it um, slowly possible for a few folks who over 70% of the population who have zero access to financial inclusion or access to financial um, wealth based on the fact that they have no digital footprint can't access financial service. And now with that digitization of information and being able to create again, very basic modeling around credit facilities, dynamic pricing, precision marketing for individuals, we can actually begin to create value for each person and be able to actually help people attract more value from what they do. So I'll give you again, practical examples. Uh, you run savings group, there are a number of savings group schemes that happen across multiple countries in Africa. And some of these women are really, really strong at saving money in the informal sector. Now, the moment we're able to take this informal sector economy create visibility for the accumulated wealth that exists, and then begin to do very simple modeling around business intelligence, um, very simple modeling around credit scoring that provides value for that individual using simple machine learning programming tools, we're actually able to give somebody a little bit more value into their lives. Just those very, very simple modules that we create. Then we go into environmental science and management where we work with the Nelson Mandela University to do a number of stuff around water purification and using um, data collected from deep science to understand the prevalence of certain type of diseases based on water, uh, born, water um, infected areas of different markets in Africa, Sierra Leone, um, DRC, and a few of these markets. Now you begin again to look at how do you use machine learning to extract some very simplistic knowledge around what you should do to be able to actually purify water and to be able to serve the right type of um, um, value proposition to the people who live in those communities as well. So again, with the right set of data and very simple levels of machine learning, we can actually provide a better service to so many people across so many markets without necessarily going deep into uh, what I call good to have problems that we have in Europe. I live in Dublin, so for a very long time. And a lot of the solutions that we solved was a lot of really good to have convenience issues. Uh, but here, you now deal with very basic problems that most people, uh, it's, it's quite hard for them to comprehend, except you actually come down. So when you start thinking about the, the value of machine learning in some of these ecosystems, you understand that the access to data, it, it, it's, it's, it's there. It's just, it's everywhere here right now because the mobile phone has given us the opportunity to access data anytime, 
anyhow and faster than anywhere else in the world. Maybe just Asia is the only place that's faster than Africa in terms of access to data using the mobile phone. The collection of that data, the accuracy of the data, and the ability for that data to become machine readable is the first problem that we solve. Then the second problem is, can we use that data now that we, we have uh, cleaned the data, made it machine learning readable, can we use that data to actually extract certain results and outcomes that change the lives of people? And the answer is yes. So in terms of looking at um, the issues, we were just on a UN panel recently talking about uh, the governance and all these things. And, and we have to bring everybody back to, is machine learning valuable to a continent like Africa? Is it possible that we can use machine learning, AI, to leapfrog a number of the problems that we face in terms of learning and education and continuous learning in an ecosystem where we're now able to extract so many levels of information from different people and somebody else can learn without necessarily having to see the other person and use this machine learning tools to create continuous awareness around knowledge programs? Yes, we can. Can we use it to solve problems in the healthcare sector where we have very little hospitals, very little resources, and we have access to data. If we collect this data right, and we build very basic modeling, we can actually provide first line diagnostics to people in real time. And then we can actually give our doctors, our nurses more time to actually deal with the real problem, the bigger problems, the bigger issues. There's one doctor in places like the DRC, Guinea, Mali, to almost 17,000 people. So when would the doctor have the time to treat everybody properly? It's impossible. No matter how many, and then if you build hospitals, no matter how many hospitals you build, you still have the problem of connectivity, managing the hospitals, and the hospitals are in rural communities. So we've just launched a few digital health prod programs, just as test cases, and then providing these doctors a game with access to the data, and then providing them with simple tools that they can run correlation. So we call it, um, what does Ebola look like when it meets diabetes? What does um, you know, malaria look like when it meets HIV? Let us run a correlation around those symptoms, around those keywords, around what, that, what the outcome would look like, and then let us create a model that can give this doctor the opportunity to say, okay, boom, in one second, I kind of know what to do. And I can share this within an ecosystem of learning as well, which is some of the tools that we then provide for the rest of the doctors in that ecosystem to then say, well, I know what this doctor do, did, about six months ago, a year ago, three months ago, the information is visible, is accessible, and I can also apply this same model, which I don't have to go and think about, to also help me because learning is also a problem because I'm a doctor and I've probably not retrained myself for the past five, six years because I have no time. I mean, we've met nurses in different parts of the continent who literally haven't retrained themselves since 1999. Now, you know, that nurse has no knowledge of a lot of the things that you're talking about. They're still working under the thought processes in which they started, they left nursing school from. The world has moved on. So how do you get this person a higher level of learning in a very short space of time? This is part of what we, why we feel that machine learning here in this continent, the opportunity that it provides for us, the access it provides for us, and how we can actually use this to create a higher value proposition for people who live in the bottom of the pyramid without them necessarily having to overspend and also worry about what we call ethical AI or the governance of ethical AI and all this big other stuff that we talk about. So, you know, and, and in conclusion, I, I want to sort of like go into uh, disease monitoring, which is a big thing now that we are also seeing here in Africa because COVID is a situation. But obviously, um, COVID, the whole world has focused on COVID and we're all trying to develop uh, machine learning tools for COVID or AIs. But, you know, we've, got, we've had Ebola, we've had cholera, we've had um, dengue fever. We, I mean, just I can keep naming them over the past year alone that has killed millions more people. But nobody has worried about developing any real machine learning tool using those data sets to see how we can help 
manage these outbreaks that are consistently killing people. But because COVID affects everybody else in the world, now the world. So I think maybe this is an opportunity for the rest of the world then to say, okay, you know what? Don't just develop a, a solution for COVID. Look at developing a solution for outbreaks in general. And look at how you can help these economies here in Africa to actually develop you know, solutions around machine learning or monitoring or disease surveillance for other types of outbreak that are actually killer outbreaks compared to what COVID is at the minute. Um, so part of what we're doing, I mean, our philosophy at the Machine Learning Institute is three things. First of all, education, awareness, developing a number of AI engineers here. We have a, a, a shortage. I mean, in Kenya, we can probably count the amount of really solid AI engineers we have in Nigeria. And so we're hugely involved in creating a whole infrastructure for data science. And then from them taking people to become, you know, and while we're doing that, we can actually trade them in the ethical models of the things that they actually need to create that makes sense. So for me, I am, you know, from, from, we talk about agriculture, we just had massive low cost infestation across Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. And I mean, if a number of um, understanding, you know, the, the climatic conditions, understanding the data sets around agricultural awareness, understanding the data sets around, you know, the shift in movement of insects could have actually helped us predict some of these particular values, right? Which we, then, we can then use to say, okay, farmers, this is what you should do. Farmers, this is how you should do it. So again, agriculture in Africa is leveraging AI quite a lot. Because now we now see farmers who are now understanding what to grow, how to grow it, the type of seeds to grow. And while the, 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 uh, the, the farming season is happening, also using very simple machine learning tools and data collected with IoT devices in real time to say, okay, well, this is what should happen. And this is how you can mitigate some of the problems that are happening in real time. So if, you know, if I was to give a year or nay for us, at this particular time in, in the history of Africa or in the history of some of the markets that we're involved in, machine learning is actually a super positive thing in terms of how we catch up with the rest of the world and how we also are able to leverage the opportunity and the access to data that we currently have in the continent at the minute. John, thank you. Thank you so much. Untapped resource of a whole different kind. That was a spellbounding talk. Thank you so much. And now that you've um, paused for breath, do have a look at some of those comments that have been coming through about your words, people being inspired. There's one or two questions there. So if I can ask you to kind of tune into some of that and, and answer some of those as well in the next few minutes, if you don't mind. I, I mean, um, somebody just said, do we need a solution for COVID? Uh, yes, yes and no. Um, we need a, sol a solution for disease management and we need a solution for disease surveillance, not just COVID. See, I, I'm really not the op opinion that COVID has triggered something in everybody. So I would employ people, if you're really looking to revise solutions, then look at the different diseases that, are, that, that is killing people consistently in this continent. And I can name a number of them for you. I've just named Ebola. We actually started this whole research last year um, September because of Ebola. What does Ebola and HIV look like in Sierra Leone? That is a big problem. What does Ebola and cancer look like in the DRC? So that is what I would say makes a lot more sense. I mean, COVID is a, yes, it's an outbreak and we are also facing it here at everybody else, but I still believe that there is the opportunity to use that now to really dig deeper and begin to see what are the solutions, that, how can we provide uh, a more agnostic solution around disease management. Somebody also asked a, a, a question about, you know, edge computing of ML on devices. It's a massive opportunity because, you know, this, this device literally rules the world for us. I mean, literally everything that we do is based around, so machine learning on devices and the intelligent machine learning to allow devices to become more um, opportunity driven and even creating AI solutions that become human based AI that allowed me as a person to make the right type of decisions, especially in the fintech space, is something that you know most companies here in Africa need at the minute. If you look at the opportunity that exists in the financial service space in machine learning, it's really actually very simple. 
what is you know dynamic pricing and what is dynamic credit scoring and what is real time npl 